So what are the different types of pressures? Uh, uh, sorry, alarms. You have a high pressure alarm. You have a low pressure alarm. You have a low peak pressure alarm. You have an apnea alarm. You have a low gas or oxygen of supply alarm. You have a technical error. You have operation settings incompatible with the uh, parameters and IE ratio indicators. We'll just see these all these things. So when you look at this uh, graphs, you'll be able to see you'll be able to see slight fluctuations in the uh, flat area of the graph, which will indicate a few secretions, maybe leaks or the flow is not adequate enough. Okay. You may also be able to find out what is the graph can be helped to find out. You can find out if there is inadequate flow. You can also find out overinflation. You can find out auto keep from the graphs. Okay. During uh, pressure control ventilation, you can actually see the tidal volumes or the time of inspiration. Is it okay or not? That we'll be able to see. So when your ventilator is giving a high pressure airway alarm, I'm sure most of you must have seen high pressure airway alarm. So there are two types of pressure in the ventilator. We have got a peak inspiratory pressure and a uh, peak plateau pressures. So the peak inspiratory pressure is usually the pressure which is due to airway problems, airway resistance and lung compliance together. And the peak plateau pressure is basically because of the lung issues. So you have got both these pressures going high. If only the peak inspiratory pressure is high, that means the problem is in the airway. But if both the peak inspiratory and the peak plateau pressures are high, means the lung and the airway both are involved. So what are the uh, high airway pressure alarms? You can have kinks in the patient circuit or the tracheostomy tube. So airway, airway is what? When you have high pressure alarms, there can be kinks, there can be secretions, there can be bronchospasm. You can have water in the circuit, very important. When you have water traps, there's water in the circuits. Or a patient is fighting and coughing on the tube. So that can also cause high pressure airway alarms. Now, when you have high pressure, you must have something like low pressure airway alarms. Now, low pressure airway alarms is because of what reasons? Either the patient becomes disconnected from the ventilator circuit. So again, you have to go from the patient to the ventilator. So from the patient, you can see whether the airway cuff is leaking or the airway has become misplaced. It's come out of the endotracheal tube and gone into the esophagus. That will also cause a low alarm pressure or you have in a case of non-invasive ventilator you will have the mask which is not tightly fitting so it's causing leaks or you have after you see the patient side then you go to the tubings are the tubings disconnected are some connections loose is the hme filter connection loose and after that you go to the or now the patient is breathing quite a lot and the ventilator is giving less uh, output so the patient demand is higher than what the ventilator is delivering. That will also cause a low pressure airway alarm because the patient is sucking on the ventilator too high and the ventilator is not delivering what it requires. So all these are the causes of low pressure airway alarms. After the pressure alarms, you have something like the rate alarms. Now the rate alarm is what? High rate alarm or low rate alarm? High rate alarm is that patient is breathing very high and you've got tachypnea and you've set a rate of, say, an alarm rate of 30 and then now the ventilator is giving you a rate of high alarm. So what is the re usual reason in this? That is an agitated patient or patient may be having fever or a fatigued patient. The tidal volume is not adequate. Now to maintain that minute volume, he's breathing higher rate. So an agitated, fatigued, fever patient may have increase in respiratory rate. And low rate alarm is when patient is not breathing, maybe due to central cause or maybe due to a lung cause, a sedated patient or a patient with impaired neuromuscular function or a patient who does not have the respiratory drive, that will cause a low rate alarm. So we have discussed pressure alarms, high and low. We have discussed rate alarms, high and low. And now we come to the volume alarms. So in the volume alarms, a ventilator is able to measure the expired tidal volume. So you have a high and low expiratory tidal volume alarms. So high volume alarm is again, usually because either the patient's respiratory effort is very high, or his demand for air is very high because of pain or because of fever or your ventilator settings are not adequate for the patient. Okay, so that can cause high respiratory volume alarms. And low is usually because of leaks, like the low pressure airway alarms. So now to sum it up, we should just remember, if you have a pressure airway alarms, like I told you, the problem can be in the airway 
of the patient or in the tube. So in the patient, you should remember the bronchus, bronchospasm, you have secretions, you have a tube abutting on the carina, or you have a lung problem which can cause pneumothorax or massive pleural effusions or very severe pneumonias. Or you have a patient biting, coughing on the tube. Okay. Or you have set a peak which is very high. So it is adding to your pressure support or your peak inspiratory pressure. So you have so whenever you are seeing these alarms, you must go and review your set alarms. Have you set them correct for a patient? Every ventilator has its factory settings of the ventilator alarms. But every patient is different. May, may, maybe a patient who is post-op and he has no lung issue. For that patient, maybe a peak, a peak airway pressure alarm of 30 is good. But a patient of COPD with very severe ARDS, if you set 30, your alarm of the ventilator, then the ventilator will keep alarming. And what happens when you don't set your alarms rightly for each patient, your staff will keep seeing the alarms and ignoring the alarm. So that means there is something called as alarm fatigue. After some time, they will not be able to see a real alarm which is important for the patient. So whenever you set a patient along with the settings of the ventilator, it is very important to go and set your alarm limits also. You have to and keep in mind, is this a patient of bronchospasm? So you have to keep in mind this airway pressures might be high. Is it a patient of massive pleural effusion? His pressures might be high. So all these kind of alarms should be set. Now, like we had uh, discussed earlier, minute volume high means a patient is uh, uh, initiating his own breaths. So patient, uh, ventilator is also giving and you need to initiate, he's initiating his own breaths. So might be, you know, he's trying to, his work of breathing is very high, so you might need to give him more sedation. Or his tidal volume is too high, so maybe we need to go down in a ventilator support. Or the minute volume alarm is set too low. So you, that is what I said, whenever you have any alarms, you need to review the alarm checklist. Don't ever put it off. Make it around 10 to 15 percent more than what, or more or lower than what your normal expected value for that patient would be. So if a patient's expected tidal volume is 500, around 15% more than that, you should need to set it. So that would be around 15 into 575. So if you can set the tidal volume uh, alarm at around 575. So for every patient, try to understand what his normal pressures would be, normal volumes will be. And according to that, you need to set your alarm checklist. Minute volume low, like I said, leaks or your set or... Another thing of uh, minute volume is low is if patient has an ICD and he has a air leak, then what happens is when you ventilate the patient, he will uh, the air will leak out through the ICD and your uh, alarm settings will be low. 